Hey everybody, it's Sophie and Marco, Dish Out on the Movies. Today we're going to talk about the Season 4 opening episode of Better Call Saul. 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 Better Call Saul. Yeah, on AMC it was on, it's on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what to say is that it is a link-up episode between what happened last season, at the end of it, and introducing this season. So, mainly you're kind of going over, in a small way, all the little stories that were going on in last season, and then you bring them into this season and what's happening. Now... So, it's kind of like a catch-up and new beginning episode. So, I guess the very opening scene is in black and white. And we'll, we'll talk about that. And it, it doesn't, it, not just to say, it's not all in black and white, it's just the opening scene, or part. So, all the other seasons have one black and white scene each. The first season, it was him... Uh, working at the Cinnabon and thinking there was going to be a hitman that comes in to kill him. But then it turns out he's just saying hi to his daughter or wh wh whoever the person was. I can't remember. And then in the second season he takes the garbage from the Cinnabon and he gets locked in, in the room and he can't open the door because it will actually trigger police to come and he doesn't want that obviously and then in season three he witnessed a thief trying to get away he pointed to the thief so he wouldn't get in trouble and then he f had a fall after he excuse me after he had an outburst I mean uh, a fall or an outburst yeah what do you call an outburst yeah what do you where, mean? Where he, he has the outburst and then he falls. Well, whatever. He, and, you mean about the thief? Yeah. He, 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 uh, he outbursted he, to get a lawyer. Yeah, he said that he didn't like the way they were treating the thief. And uh, he wanted to make sure the thief knew his rights. And they told him, he said, get a lawyer. And they heard him and... Marco says they started, this was la the last season, that they started looking at him suspiciously, and then that's where you pick it up here, at the beginning of this episode. And in this episode, it turns out that he had a second fall, because this first fall happened in the middle of the mall, and then this one happened in the Cinnabon that he works at. So that's a new piece of information. It's very... Uh, they're trying to show that his character is in a bad place. And so he's at the hospital and basically it's just him checking out and uh, getting a taxi home. Yeah, there's things that it's not just easy for him to check out. They want to see his driver's license. They want to know his social security number. It's pretty suspenseful. It, well, it is, and it's, it's so simple, and I wondered, too, because he's going to have to pay his bill, and he had to go to the ER, and they gave him tests, so uh, I don't know. I, I, I knew you'd have to have it, but it, he has to have some kind of ID, but what, what was it that didn't, the driver's license didn't work? No, the social security number didn't work because she typed in an O instead of a zero. Yeah. And he thought that it was because it was fake that it didn't work. And he was like, ugh. And, and yeah, he's, he was he's sweating really bullets. hiding. He's hiding his emotions. I mean, you, you can tell that he's stressed, but he's hiding it as, as good as he can so that he can get out of there. And then there's the, the taxi scene, which is even creepier, where this guy just stares at him. He doesn't say anything to him. And he says... That he says he wants to go to Cottonwood Mall. That's where he's working at the, at the. Or to uh, the mall. Yeah, I said he was going home, to the mall. And 
Well, isn't he living at the mall? Mm-mm. Uh, okay. Because I got mixed up with there wasn't uh, some art. We saw his house in season one. Oh, okay. When he had the, the saw tapes in his closet and he would wash them. Oh, okay. That's a boy. Is that a long time ago? Uh, not not to me because the seasons are so short that it doesn't feel like a long time. And it's actually not a long time because if if you look at the time span of the first three seasons, they only go for a year. That 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 all lasts in one year. And then in the third season, it starts a new year, and this season, it's a new year. So the season is not only slow, but it has short seasons. Yeah. So what did you think about the opening black and white scene? Well, I thought it was pretty good. I just, uh, it's simple, but there's still tension and suspense because... She has trouble with the social security number, and she keeps typing and typing, and she goes, oh, I typed a zero, or I typed a O instead of a zero. Oh, oh, me. And he said, I really have to go and get my cab. And then when he gets in the cab, Marco didn't say why it was so scary, but on the deck. Now, he is in he, Nebraska. Was a there was an Albuquerque... Tag. Tag. It's. I think it might have been one of those things. An uh, deodorizer. It, it hangs from the glasses compartment area or the mirror. It, yeah, it, and it's, I think it's a deodorizer, and it says Albuquerque. And I so mean, of all places, he, the whole world for yeah. it to say would be Albuquerque, and the guy never says anything, and he, and he looks like he could be a hitman too. I thought that he was Howard. He he looked a little bit like Howard, and I was like, oh, did we just discover where Howard turned out to be in the future and that's going to be important but no. no Howard's going to be a successful lawyer he's going to have a million no, dollars no I don't think so I, th I think he's going to be screwed soon unfortunately I also have to say the, in the interviewers asked about these black and white scenes and we're going to get a lot more of them. And we're also going to get maybe a, a full season of them, is what I took from the interview. What would you think about the show stopping in the past and then having a season take place in the future where everything kind of concludes? I don't know. <laughs> It'll be really depressing because Mike isn't there. Nacho might not be there, but it'll it'll hopefully end happily. I think that they could, they could end things really depressing in the past, and then they could have a happy ending in the future, because his character really does deserve a happy ending. He's not like the bad guy in Vertigo who gets away and then never gets caught. Well, he didn't murder anybody, right? He so. kind of, uh, uh, he, he was complicit in a lot of criminal activity, of like, course. with that Walter guy. He killed a shit ton of people, and he is, he was working for Walter, so... Anyways, the rest of the episode... The rest of the episode's in color, okay? Yeah, it's the past. And we go to each person actually in the series and pick up, like, show what happened to them last season a little bit, and then we start with them in this season. That would be who? That would be Nacho. We start off with the... The, the ashes fall into his house. The, the ashes from the fire that Chuck killed himself with. Spoiler alert, but we're doing... But that's from last season. season so. yeah. he, some people thought he might be still alive in a capacity. I didn't think so. But the ashes go to uh, Jimmy's house and... It's kind of like an artsy thing. Yeah. Just like 
a few here and there, not a whole shower. And he doesn't live next door or anywhere close. It's just like an artistic thing where you know what's going to happen next. He's going to find out about his brother. Yeah. And that's basically, that's how we pick up Jimmy finding out and everything that happens. He goes, and he won't, gross, he won't, uh, Howard is the one who actually notifies him and he won't talk to him right away and because he's like why is he calling me and he won't even answer his phone and finally uh, Howard calls Kim because Kim and uh, Saul are living together and uh, he tells him that he's got to talk to Jimmy because uh, it's about Chuck and then that's when he goes over and sees what happened to Chuck and that was a cool shot because I believe this is the, if you recall from season one, where Chuck starts to take walks outside and he starts to sit on this bench outside. I think that was the bench that Jimmy was sitting on, is the one where Chuck sat on when he would take the walks outside. And I think they sat together once in season one on that bench. So that was a very cool, it was very good directing in that part and then we had the funeral well that no that was a, that's near the end we had yeah, mike quitting his job as a, a garage attendant a garage attendant and then he starts his work as a security consultant for madrigal and it's it's this part this whole sequence is really hilarious and it's long it's, yeah it's probably longer i'd say that sequence and the sequence with the funeral and afterwards are probably the two longest sequences of events in the whole mo in the whole show i think the longest sequence which i'll talk about later is when jimmy is uh, mourning his brother but anyways first off uh, he he goes inside with this attendance badge. I think he finds it on the ground, or it was sent to him in the letter. I can't remember. I'll have to watch it again. This is Mike. We're talking about Mike. Yeah, he, he goes inside Madrigal. He's not even an official employee there, and he looks around the place to see all of the problems. I thought security. he was just, and I thought he was just doing, like, det personal yeah, that, that's what I thought he was looking for something. And he, I was amazed. He, he had this badge and he was walking around. Didn't even look like him. It looked like this bald-headed guy with glasses. Well, I just thought <laughs> nobody questioned it. And, and I'll just say one funny thing is uh, he went, was in the, like the, the, um, kitchen area where employees like get their lunches and they make have a microwave and a coffee maker and, uh, and there was a birthday cake there and there's these two guys and they obviously work there and they were talking about Muhammad Ali and Bruce Lee if they got into a, a fight and let's just settle that but, fight right here so Ali would kill Bruce Lee and, and here's the reason why is because of the Phantom Punch and the Phantom Punch I believe it's called Phantom Punch it it was this one fight where he punched this guy and knocked him out and nobody ever saw the punch it was like a Phantom did it and so if he did that to Bruce Lee he'd be dead but uh Micah actually gives his opinion on that and he gets himself doesn't get himself some coffee or a drink or something and and they I mean you're talking about he's at a company in a uh, in a an employee kitchen where people would, should recognize him and he, they wouldn't recognize him he's never been there and nobody says a word and then he starts to walk out and they're looking at this cake and they say, hey, don't you want to... And they, he thought, uh-oh, I've been caught. Sign the birthday card. Sign the birthday card for so-and-so. <laughs> and You better do that. And <laughs> I can 
thankfully, and he was like, oh my God, this is unbelievable too. Huh. You know? And he goes and sign, and what he, what does he do? Does he put the name that's on the card he's wearing around his neck? I didn't even no, know. No, he didn't put any name. He just said, happy birthday. Oh, I thought he put <laughs> a name. I don't, well, I don't, I'll have to watch it again. I don't, I was just trying to enjoy what was going on. And then we had the, in my opinion, the funniest part, which is him riding around in a car and he's he's just telling people what to do and he's like, hey, why aren't you doing this? And that, that personally, I thought that was hilarious. It reminded me a little bit of a Paul Blart Mall Cop or something like that. Which, that movie wasn't funny at all. Just the way he's he's riding around in this little car and telling people what to do. So then we have Nacho's storyline. And remember that... Uh, that was the shortest one. That was short. The end of the, at the end of the last, epi- last season's episode, Salamanca, the older guy... Hector. Hector Salamanca. His name is Hector. <laughs> he had an attack. And... Stroke. They had a stroke, and they had to call an ambulance, and uh, the reason could have been attributed to... He, he got all worked up, and he, he was taking... Um, I think it's nitroglycerin where you put it under your tongue to keep from having a heart attack. I'm not sure what what it was exactly. And Solom or Nacho had switched his pills with what sugar pills? Or no, with poison. Oh, okay. I see. Anyway, um, I mean it had been hard enough to do that and. So uh, that was extremely suspenseful. Tense, very tense. Probably the best moment of season three. So, of course, when Salamanca, Hector, got all worked up and he started feeling, probably having chest pains, he put that pill, whatever it was, under his tongue and immediately passed out and had the stroke. And so uh, we we come to that now. What what's going to happen? And of course, Nacho's uh, he's very good at having a stone face, but he's about to have a fit inside because I mean they'll just kill him in a second if they knew what he had done. And so Nacho has to go back to to uh, the chicken place, Los Polios Hermanos, with Gus and. He thinks he's in big trouble, but it's just business as usual, apparently. They just want, the big guy wants them to keep going as they have been always going and not to change anything up. And um, they said that the guy had had a stroke, and that was it. And then, well, I don't know if you want me to say anything, but... That then they show what happens from there. It's very subtle, but it's more tension, I'll just say. And that was, like Marco said, the shortest part. And then, of course, you so and they show Gus, too. And Gus yeah. has been looking at Nacho not, suspiciously. Not very much with Gus. Not, no. Not very, he does say... Yeah, it says a couple this lines. In, this is interesting. He says, spoiler alert, he says there 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 will be a war because people will try to take out the Salamancas because the leader is in the hospital. <laughs> right, it's almost like a mafia thing, actually. And so like we might Godfather. get we might get a new villain, a new villain in the show, hopefully, to spice things up. You know, we know how all these villains we know what happens to them. Right. We know what happens to Hector. And Gus. And Gus. And all these people. We'd like a new villain who would, we don't know what's going to happen to them. Nacho was kind of a villain in season one. But he, I, I guess he's an anti-hero. I yeah. thought he was a r- real villain in season one. Didn't you? Yeah, I did. Well, he acted like it. And 
he acts like a tough guy and he could he could shoot you down in a second without batting an eye. Yeah. But the thing is, the reason why he did this with Hector switching his medication was because Hector asked Nacho to make his father participate in this uh, drug selling operation and he did not want his father to have to be a part of it and he was actually almost putting the pressure on mm -hmm. him like threatening him you better have him do that or something bad's going to happen to him or both of them and he did not want Nacho did not want his father to have anything to do with it and he said his father wouldn't have anything to do with it and so that and he just so felt like he had to do that also we have the the last storyline the we have the funeral and we have Howard doing saying something admitting something and he well you you want to we'll spoil it now this is for everybody who's watched the episode but before we spoil it what grading do we give it well you give it an I'll, I'll give it an A nah. I give it a B plus because I there's a, a scene with with uh, Jimmy and he was mourning and he just kind of sat there staring and not that it wasn't necessary but it just kind of felt like the episode was going slow because there's all these commercials and it seems like he's just sitting there staring move on so I would give it a B plus because it had that slow part and a lot of these storylines like we don't know what's gonna happen so I, I don't think it's an outstanding episode is why I give it a B plus it's a setup episode well I gave it an A it is a setup episode but they had enough suspense and uh, I mean just with little things it didn't have to be big that's what's that's what's really brilliant about it you know you watch all these some of these uh, movies of today and they gotta do these big things these big setup scenes and activities and and it's a huge deal and it probably cost a ton to film but these were just simple little things that caused enough suspense and tension I mean a mountain of suspense a mountain of tension which I think is unbelievable unbelievably good and then uh, well the thing about Howard no no we, I'm not going to say anything so now Ron now it's Arco the spoiler does. it's the spoiler okay now, now we're doing so a spoiler alert. so if you haven't watched say. it <clears throat> if you haven't watched it leave now I know we've spoiled a couple of other things, but because it's really, it's I mean, really you have to watch it to yeah, get the to whole to get the whole appreciation of it, really. Especially and I if we were reviewing Twin Peaks, <laughs> just imagine people think you spoil that show. It's like you don't know what that show is like until you watch it yourself. <laughs> I'd say you see a flash too of. Uh, Saul from Breaking Bad too. He emerges. Yeah. It's a flash of him. Not, Finally. Not, not, a, not a total thing, but it happens at the very, very end. Well, now we're on the spoiler, and what she means by that is Howard admits that he thinks that he's responsible for Chuck killing himself because of the insurance and because of him getting kicked out of the firm. <clears throat> and what he's talking about is last season, at the end, Jimmy had gone, and, and I don't remember why, I mean, I know this, why this he did. This is for people who've already seen Yeah, well, he, they, he they know. alluded to the fact that Chuck had some kind of uh, physical problem. No, he problem. pointed out he had an outburst in the courtroom people already know this we don't need to go over it well I just want to make sure you, you were talking about the insurance that they know what what are we talking about what insurance people have already seen it the malpractice insurance. if they've seen this episode they would already know about that well they might need a refresher no they don't so, so okay then uh Jimmy just says oh that's your cross to bear 
And then he walks off and he's whistling and... Feeding the fish. They have some goldfish. Making coffee. Want a coffee, anybody? And... Kim's sitting there. You know, remember, she had a terrible car wreck, so she's got her arm in a sling and she's got bruises all over her face. She's a mess. And they've all just come Howard's from the funeral. Howard's crying. Howard's crying. For once, I th- he, that's the only, he's, this is the only time he's ever, like, shown any emotion besides anger, frustration, and, uh, just normal. Pompous assness. <laughs> and it, so now he's like, Ugh. and Jimmy's just like, Ugh, I don't care. And, because we didn't know what, what was the deal with him. The full episode, we didn't know if he was sad or if he was mad. No, he showed no, really no emotion. Yeah. He would just sit there and he wouldn't say anything or just might say thank you. Somebody said, I'm really sorry about your loss. Or most of the time, and he just wouldn't say anything. He just had a very stone face. And uh, he wouldn't even really say anything to Kim either. So it seems he doesn't even care. And which... No, nobody. What well, I mean? How can you blame him for that? He, I, I think it is a problem though. He hasn't told them what what he said to him the last time they spoke about how Jimmy never mattered much to him, which is a terrible thing to say. Yeah, that's like the last thing he said to him. Yeah, the last thing before uh, uh, Jimmy went left. Mm-hmm. And the house and went went wherever he was going. That was the last thing he said to him, so that's what it's in his mind. I mean, what a horrible thing to say. And he was really upset about it too. And so he's he's really time. he's really just trying to move on. Because in season one through three, you really got a sense of like he's he's buying him groceries every day. He's taking care of him every day. He stays up with him at night. And he's bringing ice for his cooler. And we know all about that right now because our refrigerator doesn't work. That's a pain. And they had no, he has no electricity in his house. He's putting ice in his cooler every day, getting his newspaper, everything. Buying him food because he can't go to the store. Putting the food in the cooler. It's just unbelievable. He did all that for how long did he do that? For years? Yeah, years and years. And so... I mean, he really was taking care of his big brother. Yeah. I mean, that's and, a lot. And he just did not care, I guess. Didn't appreciate it. And so then... Took it for granted. Uh, so with this last scene... I, I don't know, are we supposed to feel, uh, like, sad that he's not? Because, I mean, everybody s- said that they were extremely happy when that guy died last season. So now we're just supposed to start feeling sorry for him. And that's where I get to my main point, is that I think that Chuck strategically killed himself to make an impression in Jimmy's mind and to discourage him from being a lawyer and to make things all about him as usual because he he always roadblocked Jimmy and sabotaged him you saw in that one episode it was Jimmy's birthday and he makes Howard go in and tell him that he'll never be a lawyer and Never be a part of the firm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think he was planning firm. on doing that. Mm-hmm. He was. And uh, Chuck wouldn't let him. And so I see this as another one of those instances. I well, do not see this as uh, he went insane and killed himself. Well. In fact, I think we could get a scene where he's plotting out what he's going to do. I guess I'll just disagree. I mean, I'll say that's a big possibility because he was so hateful. Yeah. And he said that horribly hateful thing to his brother who took, t- who took care of him for years and helped him. And he, he's even the one, remember at the, uh, 
what season was it? The it was either last season or season four last. He helped him like uh, fashion a uh, was it foil or the space blanket suit or coat yeah. underneath so underneath he would be coat. immune to electrical waves. I mean that was his invention, his idea. And, and his but, brother just doesn't care. My he thing sabotages is, him. Yeah, he does sabotage him. And another, Every chance he can get. And another thing, too, is when their mother was dying, she asked, um, she, she uh, he, Jimmy had gone to get something to eat, and they'd been there for hours and hours, and, uh, the mother was, I think she was unconscious, and she woke up, she asked for Jimmy, and that just drove Chuck crazy, and then he, and then she passed away. And, uh, that really, I think that really irritated him and, and caused him to resent Jimmy, too. Because he's, when, well, when they worked on, when Howard was working on the obituary and he was talking, he wanted to run it by Jimmy over It was the just like another, uh, slap in the face. Yes, it was like a big slap in the and face. And so Jimmy just went, went away and just didn't even care. Which, again, I don't blame him. Right, so, I mean, he did resent Jimmy, and so, but I don't, he was sick in the head, and he, he you could tell he was just head. degrading, he was like deteriorating, like rapidly, and he's I, an enigma, and to there's this, a lot of questions about him, he was his chop, illness, well, he's chopping at all the walls, and then they say, Jimmy said, did you see the backyard? This is after the fire, and they're, they've gone there because, you know, Howard called them. And he said, all the appliances are out there, the dishwasher, the stereo. And they said that the fire department didn't put those there. He did. And so, uh, I mean, he really, like, went into this big episode. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it. And so I, I think he really was sick. You know, I think that it was a plot, it was clearly a plot to, uh, destroy him. It was not anything to do with him being ill. It, it well, it was. He had to partly been, because you saw what he was doing. But all of his actions had to do with his mental illness, not just this suicide plot. Well, okay, so... So, what, all in all, I think the episode was good. It's over 30 minutes now that we've this review. So, I think we should end it. It was really good. We're looking forward to next week, obviously. We and just, usually they show, uh, show a little snippet next week. No, they did. Week. They did. They, they would refuse to show it to us unless we watched that stupid news show that came on afterwards. Well, neither Marco nor I was interested in watching yeah. that show. Sorry. I'm, I'm not going to watch a no offense, show I don't want to watch just to I see just wasn't in interested. We'd rather watch MRE videos <laughs> than that. Or, the, or uh, MSNBC. But anyway. No, we wouldn't well, watch me, that. I would. At all. But uh, anyway, we neither one of us was interested in watching that next show. So hopefully, if when you stream, it's, it's, it's on, online. It's available. It's on YouTube. It's right now. It's available on uh, AMC too to watch, and maybe uh, it's it on. Also, uh, it's on YouTube. Maybe also they'll show scenes from next week on it. I hope, because that would be nice. So anyway, I hope it's you on YouTube. I you hope can you uh, go to AMC's channel oh. and uh, see all the scenes. As well, oh, they have okay. a sneak peek. So and so what, I, what I did is I just waited uh, 10 minutes or 20 minutes after the show had aired. And it was all on YouTube. I mean, come on. I'm not going to fall for that crap to watch your stupid new show. Well, I don't. no offense to AMC. Or no, to I, the I do. doing the new show. No, I do. Me, no I offense, do sorry. give offense because... They're trying to force us to watch the show so that we can see stuff that we want to see. And I don't think that's right at all. I think it's uh, it's terrible. Okay, well, so I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to our channel because 
it would be nice to get a few more subscribers. We've had like eight for since like February or January, and we'd like to get more than eight. If that would and be, and a lot of people are listening to them. At least for the last TV series that we did, the Alien, is over a hundred people or more. We got a lot of subscribers for that. Maybe they just didn't want to waste their time watching it because I gave really good uh, descriptions, but I never revealed the whole thing. And it's always helpful to watch it yourself, anyway. But anyway, um, please subscribe and. And we'll be back next week. And plus all the normal things that we do. And watch for our new book review. Uh, at, what would you call it? Event where we're, Marco and I are going to uh, review books. And post the reviews online. Not all the time though. No, it'll be every so It takes a long time to do what we every always so do. Every so often. And to read a book. I've been trying to read like a book a week is really um, almost impossible. So I have to read. It takes at least two weeks or something. All right, so it's almost 40 minutes now. We should. Okay, bye everybody. Bye everybody.